want to welcome you once again to this new lesson of English for Primary 5, Term 3. Yeah. So we believe whoever is watching this has already bought the workbook for Term 3 because they are the very workbooks we are using to follow these lessons. So whichever lesson you see conducted here, it is conducted based on the work that is already in that work we can tell you to have page 32 of the term 3 workbook for P5 English. Our subtopic is banking like I told you and in the previous lesson we had already seen all about the vocabulary and we agreed that whichever new word you see and the teacher has not yet defined or has not defined in this lesson it's an opportunity for you to do research to make research by looking up the word in your dictionary you get its meaning then you try constructing a meaningful sentence orally using that specific word we can't do everything from the board in one lesson yes, it may become uh, something strange so we only summarize because we know you have work in the workbook yeah, but we say we are a bit like this you can still reach us using our WhatsApp numbers, we don't want to share the end of the lessons. So, banking, like I've told you, is the subtopic, and they want to look at page 32, where we see we are connected to verbs and their different forms. We're going to do everything, there are many verbs on that page. But what do I want to see? We want to discuss, yes, their little return language, so that we get enough guidance, and we answer according to the guidance from the teacher. So we have verbs that can change to different forms. From the verb, from the workbook, sorry, we see the verb, then the continuous tense, the past simple tense, and the perfect tense. What is yes? The past perfect tense. Not the past perfect. It's the past it is the perfect tense as according to your workbook. But like I said, the chalkboard is a summary of the workbook. We have these three categories, three columns, sorry. And we'll keep kicked out one of the columns, and that is the continuous. Why? We'll be discussing and we'll telling you what to do with the continuous. The continuous is the ing form of a verb. So we talk about the continuous, just know the teacher is telling you to add ing, nothing more. Hey, just that. So that's why I didn't think it necessary to be part of what I uh, had to write on the board. So we have Basically, three columns, the infinitive part, which is called the verb, then the past tense and the past participle, which is called the perfect tense in that workbook. So, let's change these sentences to these different forms. From spend, obviously, continuous will be spending. Then, after continuous, let's talk about the third column in your workbook, which is the second column in my work here on the board, and that is the past tense of spend, being an irregular verb. The past tense is got by adding, yes, a different letter, not ed, not d, just spent is the past tense of spent. Then the past tense of spent is still the same word, spent. I have spent a lot of money during the lockdown. That is spent past participle. I spent a lot of money last month. That is spent past tense in your sentence. Lent. Our past tense is lent. L E N T. Then the past participle is similar to the past tense. Still lent. Yes. If you want to use the past participle, you talk of or you use the helping verb have. If not have, you can use has. These are the helping verbs that remind you about way to use sentences, I mean verbs in the past participle form. If I want to use the past participle, it normally comes after verbs like have or has. Simple as that. Next is withdraw. The past tense or withdraw. From draw, you know the past tense is draw. So withdraw, the past tense is withdraw. Withdraw. One word still. Then the past participle. Jane has dashed a lot of money, has withdrawn, correct, has withdrawn. 
the ing form or the sorry the ing form or the continuous should be withdrawing just to go and add their ing to be done and dusty. From save the continuous form is who want to call the praise the yes the continuous place of the workbook the ing form of save is saving obviously you drop e and you replace it with ing that is continuous then talk to the talk about the past tense you change it to save it save it and the past participle is not different from the past tense still saved next is bowels since bowels has e save has e it is the same trick and both are regular verbs bounced is our past tense my check bounced because i didn't have enough money in my account my check has bounced bounced is the same as bounced here and there past tense and past tense then borrow changes to borrow these are regular verbs. Whichever verb you see here with ed, ed, ed is a regular verb. These others are called irregular verbs in English. Their past tense and past tense forms are formed differently. Not ed, not d. So borrow changes to borrow it, still borrowed here. I have borrowed a lot of money from that bank. Correct. Deposit. Deposit is another regular verb. Deposited. I deposited the check last year. Then deposit, that is past principle. I have deposited. Yes. Deposited. Still the same word because it's a regular verb. Deposit is a regular verb. Audit. Audited. Is the answer. And lastly, the past Paris post still the same, audited. For me, this is what I have to do. For you, have more to do. So complete your sentence, your table in the workbook. Don't forget about the ing column, the continuous column where the first word and the top is depositing. You're supposed to complete with accounting, balancing, saving, balancing, withdrawing, etc. etc. as they flow. Or as the work that order is in your workbook. So this guide should be enough for you to complete the list in the workbook or the kid in the workbook. So that we go as far as the use of mm, not neither yet. Let's talk about page 33. The work at the top is about the proforms of those nouns. Give the proform of the following nouns. We have the scene you are giving to you, then the floor is required. From you, you write the form of passbook. A passbook is a book. So you write the word books and you ask me, passbooks. Finished. Bank rate. A bank rate is not a bank, but it's a rate. So the form of bank rate should be bank rates. These proforms are easy. Then a bank manager is not a manager. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not a bank. But simply it's manager, meaning the plural should only be the word manager. So your answer will be bank managers. Simple. Safe. Safe, correct. Then checkbook. A checkbook is not a check, but the book itself. So we say checkbook changes to plural by simply changing the word book to plural. Answer checkbooks. Done and dusted. No rapid science here. Things are very easy. Guarantor, auditor, ATM card, commercial bank, then machine, credit, forgery, credit, credit should have no, no proform. Then forgery, Q, that word is Q, Q U E U E, a long line of people waiting to be served is a Q. Some people read it, uh, there's a way they read it, I can't even risk trying to pronounce it here. But there's a way some children want to read the word Q. A Q is the long line of people waiting for something or waiting to be served, according to the dictionary you have. So Q, simply add S to get it through. Then bank, 
withdrawal form is not okay. The, the emphasis is on the last word, is the word form itself, and that's the noun you should change to plural. The first one, ignore. Both appear in your answer, but the word form is the one to be pluralized. Deposit form, cash account number. Yes, an account number is not an account, but the number itself. Therefore, you see, account numbers is the proof form. Using Nail, no. Using Nail, no. That's the connection one look at today. Then we see, yes, one more, and we call it a bit. Let's see what is now working. When using sentences, sorry, sorry, when you're using sentences with different subjects, neither sets the sentence code by a conjunction, no. When using neither, no, do not include no. Correct. It is used in negative sentences. When we're saying this structure pattern is used in negative sentences, meaning neither nor. The moment they appear in your sentence, it is enough. You don't need to indicate the word not to show that the sentence is negative. So when I use neither, I don't expect to use not anywhere in my sentence because neither itself means the sentence is negative. Because not also means negative, you will be making a repetition in your answer if you say neither John nor Tom is not repetition neither and not and repetitions are not needed in English you are repeating the negative next let's look at the examples using neither examples my aunt is not a tailor my uncle is not a tailor use neither at the beginning and we rewrite the two sentences as one and your answer will be neither My aunt. There are many children who have a, a problem with this. They see capital M. They use capital M here. This is the reason we use capital M here. It is at the beginning of our sentence. This is the reason the teacher is using small m here. It is within the sentence. Don't say it is in the middle of the sentence. It is within the sentence. So we say, Neither a small m, my aunt, nor my uncle is a teller. Teller, a person who receives and gives out money in the bank is a teller. Some of you have parents who are tellers, sisters, brothers, etc. Full stop, don't forget that full stop. Neither my aunt nor my uncle is a tailor. Damn, I'm Last, yes, the last example. The manager did not check the tense. Here we have the present. Here we have the past. How do things, how do we approach questions in the past using neither? This is what the teacher wants to you. You are going to use hey, the infinitive form of this verb. Well. What is the way you're supposed to use? No, the past tense on this one. So we go, the manager did not break my piggy bank. The teller did not break my piggy bank. Answer, neither. The manager. No. The teller. Then there is your questions on page 34. That's where you find them 
and you answer those questions. There are 10, yes, 10 of them. Try answering them, yes. Yes, try answering them and show you you do not have challenges with that work. Okay. The same work here which I believe we may only cover it when we are at school because there's a way what people arrange it and here it was arranged according to my desire. So Using neither nor within the sentence. What I expected is not what I see in the workbook. That's why from neither at the beginning, I went to as soon as. So leave that work on page 34 and we meet at school so that we go through together and we put everything right without any argument. So let's see what is on page 35 and that is still. Yes, comprehension, the one you know, the one you have always learned about, the one where the teacher says you should underline the answers, underline the of your answer when you read the advertisement, yes, for the notice, so that you show the teacher that you are not in gambling, you are not in guesswork, you are doing things that you are very sure of. You are going to read Global Thinkers International Limited announcement. This is the instructions first. Read the notice below carefully. Carefully and answer the questions about it correctly. Global Thinkers International Limited announcement. This serves to inform all our clients, our customers, our clients of Soroti, Katapu, and Toroko. Toro and the Pact. Pact should have been mm, A capital, then the rest is more. Apart branches, the target machines in those areas are having technical pro a technical problem. We hope our technical Initials. We repair them between 8 a.m. and 12 noon. We apologize for any inconveniences and promise to serve you better as soon as possible. Mr. Kelobo Okalebo, Jemuel, so, not Samuel. Mr. Okalebo Jemuel, Executive Director of which bank? Of that bank took about in the notice. The bank is in the Haiti Global Thinkers International Limited. Okay. 30th October 2021, no full stop, no full stop. So you're going to answer questions about that notice. Yes, depending on what you have understood after reading it. But like I said, underline where you put your answer. And this line one, go back and underline line one. So that you copy exactly what the teacher wants you to write in your answer. Let's go the only name structure now work, and that is using pay, using as soon as. Using as soon as. Turn to workbook and you see this work on page 36 and 37. Yes, page 36 and 37. That's where we have work connected to this structure pattern using as soon as. When you use as soon as, according to the, mm, the work you have in the workbook, we put it at the beginning as you see it here, and when it comes at the beginning, the first action. The first action follows this pattern. As if I say, as soon as I woke up, I washed my face. Don't say as soon as I washed my face, I woke up. It means you first washed your face. If I say, as soon as I woke up, I washed my face, it means I first woke up, then I washed my face. So when you're given two sentences, find out which of the action the two actions given to me came first. That direction is the one that follows as soon as. Okay. Then you need a comma after writing the first action or the first clause in your sentence. Your sentence using as soon as has two clauses. The first one and the second one are separated using a comma. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the examples we have on the board. The bank manager resigned. That's one action. The bank lost its clients. That's another action. Resigning and the bank losing clients. So we answer and we say, as soon as. The bank manager. <coughs> Resigned. 
we said we need a comma when as soon as crumbs have been given from our sentence. As soon as the bank manager resigned, uh -huh. he first resigned, then the bank, small t, because it is a continuation of the comma, the bank lost its clients. Full stop at the end of my sentence. Proof of actuation is part of English. Don't forget that. Second example, using as soon as at the beginning. No sooner. Oh, no sooner. No sooner have you arrived than the security guard opened the door. It means we first arrived, then he opened after seeing us. Correct. That's how security guards operate. They can't open, open for people they have not yet seen. Okay. As soon as. We don't need the word no sooner. In our answer, as soon as we, not they, as soon as we arrived, a comma, the second action, uh, the security guard opened the door. The security guard opened the door. Just yes, that as you answer. As soon as we arrived, the security guard opened. The security guard, not security. As soon as we arrived, the security guard opened the door. And that's our answer. Lastly, okay, that's all I can say about the use of as soon as. Try answering those questions about as soon as at the beginning of your answers, as shown on page 36, which stretches up to 37. That activity stretches up to page 37. Yeah, answer that as guided by the teacher. Next is using as soon as at the, sorry, within the sentence, as you see it appears if you want to complete that sentence. And on the board for the teaching. Examples, do any trend other examples? Or oh, we can even use these ones uh, uh, that are already on the board. The other examples we're going to be using are the ones we have in the workbook. In addition to these ones, then it should be enough for you to answer your questions. From, and from the beginning, then to within a sentence, as soon as. Meaning, we're going to begin with these words. Then we end with these ones. Simple as that. So there's no rocket science here once again. There's no magic needed. The bank lost its clients as soon as the bank manager resigned. Finished. The bank lost its clients as soon as as soon as the bank manage reside. That's our answer. The bank sorry, the bank was its clients as soon as the bank manager resigned. Next what comes mm, as our answer here in number two. As soon as we arrived the security guard opened the door. The security guard, the other clause, first this one last. The security guard opened the door. As soon as we arrived. The security guard opened the door as soon as we arrived. Let's now check what is in our workbook. When we use as soon as within the sentence, we don't need to use any comma. Commas are only this side up. When we use as soon as within the sentence, 
you only the only punctuation mark you need in your sentence should be a full stop. Yes. So let's see what is an example one in the workbook. The kasha called her. She signed the check. Who signed the check? Maybe she, but not the kasha. So she signed the check as soon as the kasha called her. Done. She, that is uh, maybe a bank client or customer, you like the word customer. If you go to the bank, maybe to withdraw money, maybe to deposit, you become the client at that time. So when we say that client is the one who signed, that's the meaning of that that's the meaning I get from number one, the cashier called her. Her refers to that client or that customer. Then she signed the check. She signed the check as soon as the cashier called her. Number two, Tony inserted the card in the ATM. It welcomed him. Because machines are displaying the hey, They are not like some human beings, I know. The moment you insert your card, some of them have that language. Welcome. Ah, okay. Tony inserted the card in the ATM. It welcomed him. The ATM welcomed Tony as soon as he inserted the card. As we expected, and as bring us to the end of our lesson. Thanks for watching. Do the tactic to page 37 and page 38. Then the next time we meet, we will be discussing issues to do with the present simple tense. If I term three, yes, banking, the present simple tense, or what you call that, everyday tense, as shown in page 38 of that workbook. I don't want to go beyond this point. Just do that homework for maybe seven days till we meet next time. Goodbye. Stay safe.